after investigating two concrete data structures, namely arrays and linked lists, and to be more precise, we looked at singular linked lists and singular linked lists with a tail pointer and also doubly linked lists. So after investigating all these concrete data structures, today we're going to look at our first abstract data type called the stack. Okay, so uh, the first thing that I want to tell you about this, and this is going to be important later on as well, is that stack is not a data structure per se. It's an abstract data type. So abstract data type or an ADT. And we will see in this series later on more abstract data types like queues and priority queues and so on. But uh, what is the idea of an abstract behind an abstract data type? Uh, the idea is that, first of all, uh, just like a stack is an abstract data type, they're not uh, really data structures. In the sense that we do not talk about their implementation at all. The only thing that we talked about is the interface. Okay, and what I mean by that is we talk about the operation that, for example, a stack offers to the user and the behavior of those operations. Okay, so that's what we talked about. The interface that that abstract data type provides the user, okay? And in particular, as I said, we do not talk about uh, specific uh, implementation, okay? So no specific implementation is discussed when we talk about an abstract data type implementation, okay? Which means that an abstract data type can be implemented in different ways, and as long as it provides the oper operations that are listed in the definition of the abstract data type and they show the behavior that is expected from that abstract data type, then everything is fine. And in particular, for stacks, we can, as we will see later on, we can implement a stack in different ways. And as long as we have the operations and the behavior, it is going to be called a stack. Okay, so it's not about the implementation, it's about the interface and the behavior. Now, talking about the stack, first of all, what are the main operations? So the operations that we expect from this abstract data type, we uh, have push, we have pop, we have top, and we have empty. And I should say create as well. Okay. And the behavior, the main behavior that we expect from a stack is what's called last in, first out. Last in, first out. Okay. Now, this is very important. Okay. So it doesn't matter if you use an array to implement a stack or use a, a linked list, a doubly linked list, and so on. As long as you have these operations, you can push new elements into your data structure. You can pop an element from it. You can, uh, which means remove an element. You can top, you can uh, ask for the uh, an element. We will see which element will show up. But you can ask for an element uh, to know what's in there. And you can check whether or not your uh, data structure is empty. Mm. And you have this behavior of last in, first out. Then what you have is the stack. Okay, now more about this last in first out uh, behavior. So there are different ways that you can, you know, different analogies that you can use. Well, I, my favorite is think about the stack as a stack of dishes. Okay, so you have the first one at the bottom, and then you have another one uh, on top of that, and then you have another one on top of that, and so on. So at any given moment, you can push another plate on top of the stack of plates that you have. So here we go, that's the next plate on top of that. So that's push. Now pop, and here's where last in, first out uh, comes into play. Now, if you think about it, when you want to remove a plate, 
the only plate that is available to you is the top one, okay? I mean, you could uh, extract the last one, the bottom one, but you know, uh, normally what you, uh, the first one that you pick is the one on the top, which is the last one that you put on the stack, okay? So when you pop, what you get is the last element that you pushed into the stack, okay? So uh, first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, and then when I pop, what I get is the one on the top. And if I pop again, what I get is the one on the top, which means the, the one that was last, last pushed into the stack, okay? So in other words, you only have access to the element that is pushed the most recently. So uh, pop uh, returns the element that is added most recently. That's the idea. That's why it's called last in, first out. Okay? So as I said, it doesn't matter what uh, C++ feature you use to implement this. Uh, if it has these operations and it has the behavior of last in, first out, then we call it a stack, okay? So that's the idea. Now, if you change this behavior, we get different kind of data, abstract data types, like, you know, in the future videos, we will look at queues, for example, where they support similar operations, but the behavior is different. Now, more specifically, if you want to investigate the operations, we have create which creates an empty stack, creates an empty stack. Now, if you're implementing this in C++, then you have a class called stack, right? And then create will be the uh, default constructor for that class, right? Now, push takes new element, new key, and pushes that into the stack. And the terminology here is, you know, uh, thinking about the stack of boxes or plates and so on. And the terminology is that it pushes the new key to the top of the stack. So it pushes this guy, key, uh, to the top, or sometimes people say the front of the stack. So adding a new element, right? Now it doesn't matter if it's really on the top or front and so on, but this is just, you know, uh, our way of thinking about it so that we can imagine that you know, we are creating this stack of elements and the new element goes to the top. And whenever we want to remove something, the first thing that we remove is the element on the top, right? So another operation that we want is top and top returns the element on the top, which is the element that is added most recently, okay? So returns uh, the most recently added key or pushed key, okay? Without changing the, 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 the data structure, without removing the key, it just returns the element on the top. And then we have pop which is going to be a void function, and pop removes the element on the top. So it removes the element that is added most recently, most recently added key. Okay, and finally we have a function that returns a boolean that we are going to call empty, and empty returns true if the stack happens to be empty, false otherwise, right? So very simple. So returns true if the stack is empty, false otherwise. Okay? And that explains the operations and their behavior, right? The behavior is called top or pop. The element that will be returned or removed is the one that you added most recently, the one that you pushed most recently, which we usually say is the element that is on the top of the stack, okay? So these are your operations. Uh, in the next video, we will talk about the implementation, but 
just to make sure that we understand how these operations work. I want to do an example here on the board. And also after this example, what we do is we look, look at the built-in class called the stack in C++ and we uh, play around with the uh, methods that are available like push and pop and so on. Um, so stack is already built in into C++ and you can just by including the stack I will use it. But in the next video, as I said, we talk about implementing the stack uh, in C++ as well. Okay, so let's say we start with an empty stack and then we have the following operation. We push seven and then we push 12 and then we uh, push again 15. And let's say we push again this time uh, two. And then we call top, and then pop, and then pop again, okay? So let's say this is the sequence of uh, operations that I, I performed starting from an empty stack. So at the beginning, the stack is empty, but then I push seven, so seven will be added here to the top of an empty stack. Then I push 12, 12 will be added to the top of that. So 12 goes to the top. Then I push 15. 15 is going to be added to the top of the stack. So think of these as the plates, right? Plate number 7, 12, 15, and so on. Uh, go to the top of the previous one. And then we have uh, another push, 2. Okay. Now, you know, um, note that at any given moment, the only element that is accessible to me is the element on the top, the most recently added element. If at some point I want to know what is the second most recently added element, I have to pop the top element and then investigate uh, what's on the top after that, right? Uh, okay, so the first offer for pushes, that's, that's the situation. Then I have top. Now, top returns the element that is added most recently which happens to be two, so this guy returns two. Then I have pop, which means remove the most recently added element, remove two. So now 15 is on the top of the stack, which means that when I call top again, this time it returns the most recently added element, which is 15. So this guy returns 15. And then if I, 15. For some reason, it doesn't let me write there. Uh, that's okay. So, returns 15. And if I call pop again, then 15, which is the element on the top of the stack, will be removed. And then I can push again, another element will be added to the top, and so on. So, that's the idea. Right? Uh, now, when we investigate the implementation, and we need to be more careful in this example because there are edge cases. For example, what happens if we call pop on a, a stack that is already empty? Uh, or what about the size uh, or the capacity? Like, can we reach the maximum capacity for a stack? And then if that's the case, what happens if we have reached the maximum capacity and we want to push another element? So what should we do then? These are the kind of things that, you know, you need to address when we um, talk about... Uh, implementing the stack in C++. But for now, this is good enough uh, to, to practice the first, last in, first out behavior of uh, this class called the stack. Okay, now uh, let's go to Visual Studio and uh, play around with the built-in stack in C++. Okay, so here we are. <clears throat> now, the first thing that I need to do if I want to use the built-in uh, class called the stack is to include stack. So include stack. And then I need using namespace, the standard namespace. Now I can declare my first stack object. And the way to do that is by starting with the name of the class stack. But since this class is implemented using uh, templates, what we need to do is we need to specify what is the type of uh, the elements in the stack that you're creating. Is it going to be a stack that contains integers, strings, characters, and so on? And we do that, if you remember, in angle brackets, right? 
So create a stack that is capable of holding integers in it and call that S1. Okay, so right now an empty stack is created and the type of the stack is int. Now I can push and uh, the name of the push operation is just push. So I can push say 12, I can push again seven and then push again 10, right? So now I have a stack that contains three integers, 12, seven and 10, and 10 is the one that is pushed the last, which means that if I call top, 10 is the one that I'm going to get. So if I say C out S1 dot top, it will write seven on the console for me. Okay, and then I can call pop to remove one element, and the element that will be removed is again the most recently added or pushed element, which is 10. So 10 will be removed from the stack, which means now between 12 and 7, 7 is the most recently added, and I can verify that by calling top again. Okay, and this time 7 will be written. And if I want to know whether or not my stack is empty, I can do something like if s1 dot empty, then do something, see out uh, the stack is empty. Uh, otherwise, say the stack is not empty. Right? Stack is not. So these are the main operations, top uh, push and top and top and also empty. And as I said, the create operation is the uh, constructor for this class. Okay, now if I run this code, you'll see that 10 uh, and seven, uh, these are the results of the two, the two calls they had to top. And then it says the stack is not empty because there's still 12 after two call or after one call to pop, sorry, uh, there's still 12 and seven in the stack. So the stack is obviously not empty. And as I said, I can create another stack, uh, a different type, like characters, for example, call that S2, and then I can push characters into this stack and so on and so forth. Now, uh, as I said, in the next video, uh, we are going to look at more details about these operations because we are going to look at uh, how these operations can be implemented in C++ and uh, their time complexity as well.